Isabella, I am so thrilled to have you back for yet another conversation about your experience with PANS, PANDAS, and homeopathy. Your insight is always so valuable, both as somebody who's experienced it and somebody who's come out on the other end, because, you know, when you and I met, you were definitely in a tough spot and you have accomplished so much in the, the brief amount of time that we've known each other. Um, and I'm just always in awe of what you've been able to do. So I'm getting ahead of myself though. Um, so let's go ahead and just chat about your experience and your journey. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna echo what Dr. Barr said real quick is I super, like every time you're here, I think that um, it feels like to me, you're a voice for my daughter. Um, I, I feel like, you know, the, your experiences and, and how you felt and what you thought and all of those things are such a fantastic um, voice full of our children. I know all of us moms really, really appreciate you coming and, and sharing your thoughts and your insights and whatnot. Um, so whenever your mom first told you that you guys were going to try homeopathy, how did you feel? What, what did you think? Yeah, well, before I get into it, not to continue the gush train too much longer, but I just want to say thank you to both of you because, you know, you mean so much to me and I'm always happy to be here. Um, so thank you. Makes my heart sore. <laughs> um, but I think when she told me or like when she kind of approached me about it, I felt pretty apprehensive, um, specifically like going into um, homeopathy with resilience naturopathic because about probably two or three years prior, I had seen a different homeopath and I had, it wasn't necessarily about the homeopathy that I had a ne negative experience about, but it was more the homeopath that um, just ended up being someone who was maybe not the best. <laughs> um, and so I just had like a negative experience and very like not being fully believed, um, which, you know, I think completely goes against everything that homeopathy basically stands for. So going into it, I was a little bit um, apprehensive. And I think, I mean, I've said this before, I, I'm sure Dr. Barr can attest to, you know, me being 15, 16 in the waiting, uh, like the office being like, uh, I don't know about all this. Um, so yeah, I was skeptical, but I think once, you know, I started seeing results and started healing that um, all of that kind of went away. So apprehensive, I think, as most people can relate to, but um, it all definitely, you know, worked out. So, yeah. You know, Isabella, I just have to say, like, your comments about the homeopath not believing you and it going against homeopathy, you couldn't be further from the truth. Or, or, or sorry, you couldn't be closer to the truth. Like, the, the, mm -hmm. the reality is it's actually even written in the organon that you have to believe the person that you're working with. Um, and, and he even writes it. I mean, I know that PANS, it, it can present as a mental health condition in some ways. Um, and it's also, you know, behavioral and physical aspects. It's, everything is convoluted together, right? Um, but the, the area in the organ of medicine where Samuel Hahnemann writes about it is in the mental health component. And that's the part where people really get struggled with the most, where they're, they're not believed or they're, they're told that there's something, um, yeah, that's just, they're basically not believed. And so you're absolutely right. Um, it goes against homeopathy and it goes against what Samuel Hahnemann said. So we always have to treat somebody as if we believe them to the point that if somebody were to tell me, um, I, I, I don't want to like spoil any of your symptoms or anything like that. It's up to you to share. But there was something that you, I remember you telling me in that very first visit that if you didn't know that it was something that you were experiencing that was not real, my job would have been to join you as if it were real. Um, and talk to you as if it were real, not try and convince you otherwise. And so um, you hit the nail on the head. You absolutely have to work with somebody who believes you um, and who, who, even if they don't actually believe that it's true, that they um, still work with you as if they believe you and not try and question what you're, you're going through. And the reality is like what you were experiencing was real, even if it's not somebody else's experience, right? And like, mm -hmm. that's just the truth about working with somebody, period. Like your experience is real, even if it's different from somebody else's. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so how was homeopathy actually different from the stuff that you had tried before? So like, I know that before you, you and I started to work together, you, you had seen the other homeopath. So, I mean, you can even share how things were different um, from one homeopath to, uh, to another, because there are different ways that people do homeopathy too. So how is homeopathy overall different? And then maybe even how is the, the approach to homeopathy different? Yeah. 
I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think for me, treatment was always like, ah, oh, well, we haven't tried, like we've done this thing and that didn't work, even though it should have. So let's go ahead and try this thing without really thinking about how that would affect your body at all. Um, so it was kind of like not listening and just being like, oh, well, this has worked for other people. Let's, let's put this on you, even though, you know, you've been sensitive to things in the past. So that meant like being on a lot of medications that didn't work with my body and being really sensitive to that. And despite that, you know, going through many and many cycles of medications, um, not to say that it doesn't work for anybody, but for my body and for what illness I was sort of going through, it wasn't appropriate. Um, which was just really demoralizing because, you know, you're like, well, if, you know, none of these treatments are working and I'm not really being heard, then like, is it something wrong with me? Is like, what is happening? And I think the experience with the, um, the, uh, my other pursuit of homeopathy before resilience was kind of similar in that I didn't feel fully listened to, which and mm -hmm. as I was saying is like, the only way you can really be assessed and like given the appropriate treatment. Um, and I think it was so refreshing to have that first sort of meeting where it was like, let's just get it all out into the open and really listen and um, think about what's gonna work for my body and like what minute symptoms um, are gonna contribute to the right choice. So I think a lot of the past treatments were just it was just really difficult and um, it didn't feel personalized or it didn't feel like my body and my reactions were taken into consideration, um, which was so in such a good way um, for homeopathy. So, yeah. Yeah, I got to jump in, Isabella, because I realized that we jumped in because we know you so well. And the people who are members of our Facebook community and who have been for a long time, they also know you because you've come in and you've shared a very long version of your story and your journey. And you've also volunteered to come in and talk specifically to teens and give answers that, that teens have about their condition and getting treatment. Um, but I realized that there's probably some people, especially who are not part of our Facebook community, who don't know you, that we just sort of gave them like, we, we missed the part of the biggest, like the heart of things. So if you don't mind, let's backtrack a little bit before Jody and I keep peppering you with questions. And share what you're willing to share um, with the world about your journey um, up until we met um, and your yeah. experience with pans or pandas. I'll try to make it as brief as I can. I think the um, story, like the first sort of uh, Facebook live or whatever it was, I think that went for like two hours. So I'll try to <laughs> cram no, like two let's hours. Two hours. <laughs> and then, like maybe five Quick or notes. less minutes. Um, yeah, quick notes version. Um, basically in 2012, I had my first sort of what we called an episode. I had first sort of a strange, um, like just a strange episode of like sort of almost like schizophrenic, um, symptoms and just really, really high anxiety. And we hadn't really taken that into the equation until later. Um, but then the first sort of real event that kind of changed things is I had, um, like a grand mal seizure basically, um, in Greece and that was intense yep. um, and, you know, was told, you know, go to the doctor and go to a neurologist and like get this sorted out. Um, and so I did, but I wasn't met with, um, you know, I don't know. I was told that I basically didn't have epilepsy, which is kind of jumping ahead, but that was after like, you know, EEGs where it didn't really show up. Um, and again, that cycle of medications where things weren't really working. Um, yeah, I was basically told that it wasn't epilepsy or anything based in health, that I was just hormonal. And because I was having um, these more mental health symptoms, because as I was going on, I was having basically any sort of <laughs> symptom that you could um, think of. Uh, my, mo <laughs> my mom, okay, sorry, can I like, let my dog get. I don't know if of you can. Course. Hear me. Of course. All right. I'll, I don't know if we'll be able to cut this, but never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as we're recording this, we're in the middle of a pandemic still. And well, maybe hopefully we're not in the middle. Hopefully we're nearing the end because they nearing the end. Us. But, you know, like we, we've all adapted that we are in pandemic times. And so yeah. um, we're, we always have 
pets and kids and all those things that we have to, to navigate all so, real life it's yeah. the it's the zoom <laughs> thing well um, you know and, and but, if, if yeah. anybody's going to relate to it, it's going to be a pans or pandas parent because i don't know if you guys remember this but when the, when the pandemic started there was like okay now the world actually understands what it's like to be a pans and pandas family so even after the pandemic people who really need to hear this the most are still going to relate to exactly you know having anything going on so yeah. real life all right, uh, so you, you were left off of telling us about um, your experience with the grandma seizure and going to see neurologist yeah. and everything and, and how scary that was when you were 12. Yeah, so as over like maybe one or two years, that's sort of when um, mental health sort of um, symptoms sort of appeared. So um, kind of used this imagery or metaphor is that it was like there was a spinning wheel of symptoms and that someone was just throwing random darts at it and every day it was like a new symptom so i struggled a lot with um body dysmorphia and disordered eating um then like just a lot of depression anxiety paranoia basically if you sort of gave me one of those intake forms i was like checking off everything um, which understandably I was met with a lot of like, well, this isn't possible. There's like no way that you are having all of these symptoms. And so again, kind of went through another medication cycle, um, which because like we weren't really targeting the appropriate like issue at hand, um, kind of had an even worse effect. Um, and things kind of continued to snowball. Um, I would get a lot of weakness. I was having seizures almost every other day super light sensitive. Um, there were times where I would be so weak, I'd be in a wheelchair, or kind of have a semi sort of paralysis. Um, and again, met with like a lot of not great responses from doctors. Um, but nonetheless, with the help of my mom, <laughs> who's like the real superhero of the story, basically, um, she helped me through everything. But um, I think we first learned about pans, pandas, probably around 2015, a few months before I saw Dr. Barr. Um, and I didn't think I had it. I was like fully convinced. I was like, mm, no, probably not. But then as it turns out, I did. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, and then, you know, went to go see Dr. Barr. And at that point, I was pretty low point. Um, I think that day I had had an episode, like I had a seizure and it was just like not good. Kind of walked into the office with my sunglasses that I had to wear because of light sensitivity and just was very not good um, and was just having a lot of trouble at that time. Um, but then with um, homeopathy and then I found one uh, medication to like specifically treat epilepsy, which I think I only got that correct one because the other doctor had fully listened the way that Dr. Barr does of like fully listening to all of my symptoms and everything that I have to say. Um, and I just sort of slowly noticed that my symptoms, um, both physical and mental kind of started spacing out. So I'd have like a little resurgence or um, aggravation, but then that would sort of space out over time. And it was the first time that I sort of like really had hope that um, things were changing. So if you want to get the full two hour version, that's just like the trailer for the two hour version. I'm sure you can find it on the Facebook or um, the YouTube channel. Uh, but uh, that's sort of the quick notes, speed, uh, speed run version. Yeah. And, and you so ran. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say you, you ran like right into, you know, exactly what I was going to ask you next is how was the first several months of being in treatment when you started to see those little backs and forths and, you know, symptoms getting a little bit better and then symptoms getting worse again. How, how was that for you? Yeah. Um, I was funny because I was talking to my mom earlier because I was like, I honestly can barely remember <laughs> like what it was like in those first few months, especially because like, you know, I've had aggravations here and there, but I was like, for some reason, I can't really remember it that well. Um, but I think what I can remember is that, like, I was able to get through those first few months because um, I was getting relief, um, which I hadn't really had before. And so even though it was like, you know, a little bit of struggle, you're trying to find the right um, remedy or dosage and all of that. Um, and there's, you know, some aggravation because it's, you know, this first sort of um, line of defense. Um, so, you know, the aggravations were difficult and, you know, you always have that thing of like, oh, well, is this really working? But 
we just decided to stick with it. Um, and again, it was, even though those, you know, moments of relief and of feeling better were like pretty small, it was like the first sight of like this light at the end of the tunnel and kind of moving towards that. Um, and I think that's a big part of the reason why um, we were able to like continue um, through it even when I had those kind of discouraging um, moments. So I think that's sort of how the few, first few months went. And again, as it was spacing out more, that's when I was like, okay, something is very good here. <laughs> like this is on the right track. Um, so yeah, that was the first few month experience. So you just mentioned that you have had aggravations, but you don't really remember a whole lot about them, which is encouraging for people, right? That like it's mm -hmm. aggravations aren't going to be something that lasts forever, even when they start off. And, you know, it can be really scary for somebody who was in the situation that you were in, like you said, that you were actually able to walk into the mm -hmm. office um, to think that you might have aggravations uh, of your symptoms, that your symptoms might get a little bit worse before they get better. Um, that can be a really scary type of thing for people to experience. So, um, I mean, if you don't remember anything about what the aggravations are like, we always like to see if people do have any recollection, but I mean, it's been quite a while for you. Um, but do you happen to remember anything or, or remember any fear about dosing afterwards or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember some things. I think what's difficult about it is on one hand you have this you know recurring feeling like you have the symptoms that are kind of feeling like they're coming back a little bit and you know that's part of it but there's also this feeling of almost PTSD where you know you're kind of traumatized at that point because mm -hmm. you've gone through so much so you know it's really difficult seeing these symptoms again even though at a certain point, you know, okay, well, this is just a little blip and we'll get past it. It can feel really frustrating and really scary to have those come back because there's always that little fear of, well, what if it just stays like this? And um, so I think that's a really difficult part. I think a lot of the aggravations mainly happened with um, sort of the like mental symptoms. So, you know, I've had more intense bouts of like fear or um, like anxiety are two sort of big things that I think flared up um, when I have had aggravations in the past. Um, I was sort of thinking about this earlier of like, there's that saying of like, what comes up must go down, but also what goes down must come up for me um, with the aggravations because, you know, after a little bit, you're like, okay, I move past it. And that what's, is what makes the aggravations easier to deal with. Um, and something that I've seen for a lot of people is those first few times you're like, ah, I don't know what's happening. And you're thrown into panic mode and this fight or flight moment. Um, but I think it got easier, um, the smaller that aggravations got and the more that I had to deal with, or like, you know, I was equipped to deal with it and they got like, you know, less and less. And I feel like now, if I have an aggravation, which I haven't really too much for a while, um, we're like kind of on it and we know if there's like a dosha change or if it's just one of those things where I just ride through it and I know it's just the first few days of trying something new, so yeah. yeah. Great. Isabella, when was the first time you remember or, or you realized that homeopathy was starting to help your, your symptoms and you were like, oh, you had that moment? Yeah, I mean, I think there were a few, I think, for me, what was really telling was the spacing in between seizures and, you know, little, I think, I don't know, there are even times where I sort of look back and in the moment, it didn't feel like much has changed, but, um, you know, I would be able to go through a day normally. And then I would look back the day after and be like, wait, I was able to do this thing. Like that hasn't happened in a really long time. Um, so a lot of those moments came through like reflection. Um, and I think, yeah, just not being as light sensitive, not having to wear, you know, my glasses or contacts every day. Um, I had for, <laughs> I had these like big chunky sunglasses and these, you know, colored contacts. Um, but I think going through one of those days or going a couple days without having um, symptoms and not, you know, feeling like the world was ending and I could get through the day and still feel fine afterwards um, were the first sort of times where I was like, okay, something is different here. And it feels like it's maybe here to stay, which was a very exciting feeling. But yeah. I remember so clearly the first time that I knew for sure that you were doing better. And it was that time that you walked into my office and I freaked out and said, oh my gosh, you have eyes. Yeah. And 
you and your mom looked at me like I was crazy because you had already <laughs> been going without your sunglasses for a couple of weeks before I had seen you. And, you know, we weren't in touch or anything because you were doing well. Um, and so for you, it was like, wait, what are you talking about? You crazy yeah. person. I was like, I have never seen your eyes. You, you mm -hmm. have beautiful eyes. And that's when I was like, okay, <laughs> we have made some significant progress. Like I was just having to rely on what you shared with me in visits. But that was the first time that I was like, yep, we've made some big strides here. Mm -hmm. um, so you've definitely had ups and downs, as you've talked about. Um, what was it like to, when you started to feel better and then you'd have like some regressions, you know, were there any big regressions that stand out to you and, and what was it like both going into them and coming out of it? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, cause sometimes I like sort of see regression and aggravation as the same thing. So I was just thinking about it. I think I had honestly like a little bit of a regression recently and that was the first time I had it but like I don't know I would maybe it was more of an aggravation but I was just sort of having a lot of paranoia and fear and anxiety mostly because I'm just college senior big big stress um <laughs> and so I was kind of thrown into this place of like stress about it because I was like oh what's happening um and, you know, it lasted a little bit, but then we, I'm now, you know, much better and haven't even like thought about it. And I can you know, go do stuff and not be um, completely afraid. Um, and I think what, again, like helped me get through it was thinking, okay, this has like happened before um, and it won't last that long, even though it feels like it's lasting for a little bit. Um, we're gonna get on the right path because it's happened before of just needing to change a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think that was, um, the sort of main ones. I mean, again, it's like hard to remember, which is like a good thing. I mean, obviously you don't want to like block out, but it's nice to be like, huh, I don't remember the bad parts anymore. Um, it, it's kind of nice to think like, ah, it's been normal for normal for so long that it's, you know, looking back is kind of difficult, but yeah. yeah. And like, even what you're like regression or you know you're, as you said you're maybe regression maybe aggravation or maybe just being a college senior with a lot of stress mm -hmm. on your plate um that could be 100 percent normal for your current situation mm -hmm. regardless of your previous diagnoses um that even those times when you feel like maybe you're regressing it is significantly less than before you know you're like mm -hmm. okay i'm anxious i'm having a little bit of a harder time sleeping not you know having as you said when you first started um schizophrenia like symptoms or mm -hmm. um you know the eating restriction and all of the different things that were significantly more dangerous to your health and mm -hmm. well-being um not to diminish what you you experience at any given point in time mm -hmm. um but it's it's lovely to see that like your regressions um when they do happen are are significantly less than they were before and, mm -hmm. and wouldn't even really necessarily fall into the category of like a pans regression right it would be like mm -hmm. a Hey, I'm a human and I'm not doing my best right now. And so I need yeah. a little bit of support. Um, yeah. That's and, um, something that was, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, and I was, the other thing I was going to say is part of it too, just to, so you don't beat yourself up or so anybody who listens to or watches this video doesn't beat themselves up. Part of it is just the nature of the condition too, right? Like what you're dealing with in flares is inflammation of the brain. And so of course your brain is not hundred percent connected to what's happening. And so it doesn't show any sign of you know, deficit or defect that you can't necessarily remember everything that you have experienced. Um, it's almost a blessing, um, but it, it's it's normal for that to be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with those uh, those hard times, that, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Oh, no, I just was saying like, oh, I forgot what I was going to say before. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You can go for it. <laughs> with those hard times, was there ever a point where you wanted to stop homeopathy and just throw the towel in and, and be done with it? And Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was maybe a point or two in the beginning where I was maybe like, ah, this isn't good. <laughs> like, and this is really hard. Um, but I think at that point I had invested so much into healing and I, it was something that I wanted so bad, um, that I was like, you know what, I just need to keep giving this a try. Um, and, you know, really lean into those small moments that are feeling good. Um, and you know, that slowly grew bigger and then the majority of what I was feeling was, um, positive, but yeah, I think it was just, 
trying to stay determined and also having the support system that I did of like being like, okay, we can manage this and we can deal with it. Um, and then maybe if it's still not working in a while, maybe we'll try something different, but unsurprisingly it did end up, <laughs> it did end up working and um, <laughs> it really helped me. So great. Um, so yeah, I think it was what kept me from kind of throwing in the towel was just really focusing on the future and being like, I really want to be like, okay. And um, just trying to get through those hard spots and focusing on like what was feeling better. Um, so, yeah. So it's fair to say that you're glad that you guys stuck with it. Yes, that is <laughs> understatement. <Yeah. laughs> Isabella, what was the hardest part of the healing journey for you? Hmm. I think honestly it came before homeopathy I mean like a little bit of an overlap um I think the hardest thing for me and something that I've kind of like at this point dedicated so much of my life to is like not being believed or not being heard by the doctors that I was seeing and um not to plug my own podcast but I have well, you please. know I was actually I was gonna ask if you wanted to please plug your own thinking. podcast yeah um, I have a podcast called Invisible Illness, Invisible Patients, Invisible Women. That's basically all about the hardest part of my healing journey, which was not being believed by doctors and not being heard and just sort of dismissed and cast off and, you know, told, you know, it's really hard when you're 12 and being told like, mm, you're hormonal or like, mm -hmm. oh, you're this, like this or that. And it's trauma or it's, you know, just nothing that's real you know you're basically making it up um and that's really hard to hear when you're you know kind of developing your sense of self um and it's really destabilizing and so i think that was the hardest part for me and you know obviously going into homeopathy and healing the aggression um aggravations were difficult but i think thinking back that was the hardest thing and even beyond sort of my pan symptoms, that was one of the hardest things to recover from um, because it's sort of hard to develop, redevelop that sense of trust in yourself um, and trust like what is feeling right and what's real and what's not, um, which is part of the reason why I'm so grateful that I started with resilience because again, I've like said this so many times, but like it's so important to me is that we went through everything <laughs> like I mean we went through everything um and every you know little check and I still continue to feel like so heard um and listen to and I don't ever feel like there's that threat of like or that fear of being like oh well am I going to be told that you know it's nothing or it's all in my head or that there's no real hope I know that I will always find you know cope in resilience naturopathic and everything so yeah, I think the hardest part was that. And it's unfortunately something that a lot of um, people go through. Um, but, you know, my sort of thing now is to show that there's hope and that when like the important thing is that you talk about it and you share your story and know that you're not alone in that. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely that was a really difficult part for me. But I've, you know, kind of realized that that isn't going to stay like that forever. And there are ways to kind of stay you know resilient and share hope and find hope in myself so yeah i find it really cool that you, you have taken your hardest part and turned it into a gift for others um listening recently to uh i can't remember who interviewed you um but i was listening to you talk and i was like cool you know as i go through my own healing mm -hmm. um and listening to some of the specific things that you were talking about was just something that I've never really, you know, heard anybody talk about as, you know, going through this whole trauma of, you know, providers not believing us and it being worse, you know, being women and uh, just acknowledging really what, you know, what we had been through, through the whole process. So I love, I think it's beautiful that both you and your mom have turned into such fantastic mm -hmm. advocates and, and you guys are, uh, you guys are just, absolutely pouring back into the community which is amazing Thanks. um yeah so with sorry another thing I want to add is I think like that's one thing that has helped me through is like while this is sort of like my greatest hurt it's also been my greatest blessing because I feel like that 
this opportunity to try and help people in whatever capacity and like trying to lend support is like such a beautiful thing and that I'm so grateful that I'm able to do that. And like, along with the podcast, I'm now like doing a research study for like my senior thesis. So it's really beautiful for me that I'm able to sort of take this and yeah, try to help people because that's, I think the one thing that kind of keeps me sane (laughs) or has kept me sane is um, trying to find ways that, you know, to share this story and help encourage other people to um, share their story. So thanks. Yeah. And you're, you're like the perfect testament to, um, you know, I'm always telling moms, like, this is a really hard and awful thing, but every single person in your family is going to be changed for the rest of your life because Mm -hmm. of the suffering. And, you know, as moms, it's, it's our children too. And you're a beautiful example of the amazing things that have come out of something so traumatic and tragic and you have you're you're just changed you're a different person and you're 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 you are still down there fighting with us mamas Mm -hmm. and even helping us mamas you know acknowledge our trauma and and you know try to work through that and and fight against those things that we went through so it's really it's really amazing amazing stuff that you're still doing. Um, so if you were to be talking to a young adult or even really even a child, um, and they were to ask you about homeopathy, what would you tell them about it? Yeah. I mean, I think I would tell them that like, sure, there are going to be aggravations and like, that's something that you need to prepare yourself for. Um, but you know, the benefits that come out of that are so, like rewarding and, you know, are really, really good. And, um, just keeping your sight on the future and trying to like, you know, think of little things that will sort of help you get through those hard moments. Like for me, I was, you know, going to college was one of my biggest things of like, okay, I just want to get to this point and I want to be good for that. Or, you know, just thinking of like little moments, um, with either friends or like small, like little incentives to try and like, um, when I'm, when you think about like how difficult it is to try to focus on that. Um, so I think it, when I would talk to someone and things that I've said to people in the past as well as like, um, acknowledge that it's going to be difficult and it's going to be painful because just, you know, it's important to acknowledge that there are little blips, but just know that those, um, the little like dark and negative moments are going to be like completely overshadowed in the best way by all of the positive healing um, that is to come. And just really, if you can just try to see it through. Um, And as I was saying earlier, it can feel really scary to be like, oh, well, what if I'm in this bad place again? Um, But if you can just sort of continue on with it and I think you'll be surprised. Um, And it's a really cool moment when you don't even think about your symptoms and you're not tracking them down. Um, something my mom has said, like, you know, we passed like a year anniversary of my first seizure and we didn't even like remember, like we didn't even recognize it because it was like not even on our minds. And so I think just like trying to hold sight of that and just know that healing is a possibility um, are sort of the biggest words of wisdom that I can give through all of this. So in our Facebook group, um, where we've got thousands and thousands of families that are working on their own healing for uh, pans and pandas using homeopathy, one of the things that Jody sort of coined um, is the homeopathy hallelujah. This is definitely a Jodyism. It became such a thing that we started doing a weekly post and we do it. We do a hump day homeopathy hallelujah. So we always have to ask, what was your own personal favorite homeopathy hallelujah moment? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking about this and I think like, which are so many of my answers are that like, oh, there's just so many little ones, but I think like the biggest one was, that was just huge was like stepping foot at my college that is two, 3000 miles away from San Diego. And like, thrive like doing great like talking to new people and being in this really overstimulating environment that you know before starting homeopathy I would have been completely petrified by and I totally would have been like I cannot be here um and so you know normally like I feel like the homeopathy holly is you know every day they're sort of like oh I made it through this or that but I think that for me 
in a much bigger sense was like, whoa, like I had wanted that for so long, but you know, there's always that thing where you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get this, but I think through, you know, pursuing homeopathy and like really, you know, staying on top of it, being able to get to a place that I had wanted for so long. And I had just been envisioning was really, really special and nice. And, um, you know, there are difficult moments throughout college, but they're normal people problems. I think that's another one is like distinguishing like, oh, this is like a normal young adult thing. That's weird. It's not actually a pans thing. And I like, even in one of our appointments, we are like, but this is like a normal thing that a normal person, normal, I'm using this in quotations because all people are normal, but um, this is something that someone without pans they're do, like, they're having finals. It's going to be stressful. Like there's going to be these yeah. like little moments. Um, so I think anytime that like, I'll have a stressful moment or something that might feel like pants symptoms coming back being like, oh, the world is kind of crazy and like things come up, but this is something that, you know, you just move through and you can move past it. So I'd say the big one was like, definitely going to college. Um, but other than that, just like, either the first time or like any time where I'm like, oh, this isn't actually a pans thing. This is just a result of being human and kind of living life. Um, things are gonna come up, but um, yeah, I think those are the two big things for me. If you don't mind me just giving a tiny bit of context for the people who don't know you like Jody and I do and who haven't heard you are and your mom's two hour long story. When you and I met, you couldn't even get through a day at school. Mm -hmm. and your mom was regularly, um, having to like drop everything to go and pick you up for the few hours that you were there because you just mm -hmm. couldn't manage things. And so the thought of you going to college period was a big question when we met, let alone mm -hmm. going to college 3000 miles away and thriving. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanna make sure people have that context that it's not like, you know, you were always gonna go to college and where you're gonna go 2000 yeah. miles away or 3000 miles away. Like this is a, is she even gonna go kind of thing? Um, mm -hmm. Regardless of how brilliant we always knew you were, it was more about like, were you going to be able to manage solo doing that? So um, yeah, that's a pretty darn big homeopathy hallelujah. And yeah, and I, as, a, as you're telling me this, I'm like, okay, let me think about all the homeopathy hallelujahs I've had with you, like all of the times that I was ready to do cartwheels down the hallway um, because of how excited I was that like this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And, um, but yeah, I think you nailed it with the biggest one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Isabella, what did your mom do to help you through the healing journey? How did she support you? She has done so much. <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of like hard to express just how much she's done for me. And like, you know, I see how much she's like done also in other parents of the pants group. And that's so great to see. And um, I mean, she, help, she would take me to appointments she would drive me everywhere. She would help me not lose hope. Um, she was there through it all. Like when I would, be, if I had like a pan attack, she'd be there to help stick by my side and help me get through it. Um, she was always someone that I could talk to and confide in without any judgment. Um, and she taught me to never give up, which is one of the greatest gifts that anybody could give. Um, because even, you know, it's very easy to sort of take what doctors are saying when they sort of tell you and dismiss you, it's easy to sort of take that at face value, but she didn't accept that. And she kind of helped me realize that I couldn't accept that, um, and that we were going to find someone who was going to help me and that it wasn't that I was just making it up that, or that like, you know, I couldn't ever be helped, um, because it was too niche of a problem. Um, that, you know, that if you just keep going and I'm really lucky also to have like the ability and privilege to have seen so many doctors. Um, I think that's something that I like always want to mention because, you know, we were able to see so many different doctors and keep pursuing that. But unfortunately, so many people don't have that. Um, and yeah, my mom is just like my hero because while she was doing that, she was also you know, working at my family's restaurant and taking on so much responsibility with the family. Um, but yeah, she is one of the biggest reasons why I'm able to be where I am today because she didn't lose hope. She 
made me not lose hope. And she, um, you know, just encouraged me to keep going and was always, yeah, there for me and always there to support me and um, anything. So yeah, I cannot state just how lucky I am to have her as a mom. And, you know, whenever I, you know, find myself on like the um, PANS group, I'm always like, oh, I see all of these like wonderful moms that are just like fighting. Um, Cause it's really hard. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, I, everyone is like really, really lucky and it's, you know, really cool to see um, moms that are fighters and like not giving up um because it can be very difficult sometimes but yeah I have to say that I agree that all pans moms and fathers too some pans moms yes. and pans dads are heroes they're all worthy um and they're inspiring for their commitment um and their the work that they put into their kids um and I have to say that I think your mom is like a hero among heroes um, because, or she's a hero of the heroes, because I can't tell you how many hundreds of people that I know that I have been in contact with because of your mom. And that your mom is somebody who, um, she does, she didn't just fight for you. She fought for every family who has dealt with pants and she still is, you are in a better place. Like you are <laughs> on the other side and your mom is still fighting for people because your mom just has the biggest heart. And so I hope that I can be the kind of mom that your mom is, is to you, that I can be that kind of mom to my daughter. And I just hope that so many people realize just how much, I mean, I don't, I don't know that Jody and I would even have been connected if it weren't for your mom. I'm, I'm pretty certain that your mom is what connected me and Jody together. And Jody is obviously um, a hero among heroes as well. Um, and so I just, I'm so grateful for your mom and uh, I look up to her as somebody who I hope that I can be like as a mother personally. Um, all right, let's get to the celebration. What is life after PANS like for you? It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> really, really great. Um, I think again, like life can be hard sometimes, but I'm always pleasantly surprised when I get through it um, and I'm able to sort of deal with it as anyone would. Um, you know, I'm like, I'm a senior in college, which is gross because it's wild how time <laughs> like passes. Um, but, you know, I'm like, I love my classes and I've been able to make such wonderful and supportive friends. Um, and I do music and I've been able to pursue that as well. So, I kind of have the tendency, I think this is also probably a thing with pans is like, I just throw myself into everything um, because I'm like, just so grateful for every moment. Um, like I'll see a butterfly, be like, oh, this is so cool. And like, I'll be in class and I'll be like, oh, like there's so much reading to do, but like also I'm excited to do it because I'm able to, um, which is something that I didn't think I would be able to for so long. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool to not think about your symptoms for a long time um, and not sort of be reminded of that. Um, and yeah, it's cool to just be a college student and like have hobbies and take on probably a little bit too much at times, um, but always remembering to, you know, take it easy and stuff. Um, and, you know, Pans has certainly taught me a lot of things which I'm grateful for but yeah again as I was saying like it's just cool to be a human and a student and like not having this whole other thing to grapple with at the same time and I think that's like why I love talking to other um, kids or teenagers with pans like whenever I have because um, it is possible and even though like as you were saying, like, I did not, I didn't think I was going to be able to go to college. I like norm, normal life or like life without pans rather just did not seem attainable or possible, um, until it happened. Um, and so I'm just, yeah, very grateful to be here and definitely a celebration. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love what you say about the butterfly that cracks me up because 
pants changes the way that you view the world right mm -hmm. and like every like every little thing is a gift now um and it, it's just the way you see the whole world is completely different after mm -hmm. after coming out of it so whole journey all the healing all the 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 all the tough stuff what's your biggest takeaway from everything that you went through mm -hmm. Or maybe takeaways. They're yeah. even narrowing it down to one might be. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest thing for me is like, don't give up, but like more specifically, don't give up on yourself. Um, which, like, you know, I've I say time and time again because it's so important to like try in whatever way you can to find that resilience and find that spirit to keep fighting. Um, Cause I think that's honestly one of the things that like got me through the most is like really committing to, um, getting better. Um, which is hard because, you know, it becomes familiar for a while to like feel so bad. Um, and so it can easy to be like, oh, well it can never be better. So I'm just going to stay in this place. Um, but if you're able to sort of find that, um, ability to keep going, um, and fighting, that's really great. Um, I think like trying to find support systems in whatever way you can, if that's family, doctors, peers, that is one of the biggest helps. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you were saying, Jody, like it really does, it just changes the way that you see things. And so when you can find those small pockets of beauty and relief um, to really hold on to that and um, to help you sort of get through it and um, big takeaway is that Dr. Barr and all the other, you know, other paths and doctors at Resilience are just also heroes. Um, so yeah, I think those are sort of the big takeaways and like, you know, obviously it's nice to be like, oh, you know, I forget how it was, but also like to not fully forget what I've been through and like really honor that you've been through a really, really tough time. And so it's really cool that if you're able to be you know past it or work through those difficulties um that come up so yeah those are the few things i would say are the big takeaways well isabella i cannot thank you enough for taking some time out of your much needed much deserved break from <laughs> your studies and all of your projects and your research and your podcasts and all of the things to talk to us you are such a bright shining light. We always talk about homeopathy, the healing journey as being like a mountain. And, and Jody and I talk about all of the people who have gone through and come on the other side, but like their lights are getting brighter and brighter and brighter as they're climbing that mountain. And you're standing at the top of that mountain now with this big beacon of light. Um, and yours is exceptionally bright. And I am so grateful for all of the work that you do to help kids and women and people who are disregarded and set aside um, find their voice and all of just like the beauty that you bring to the world. I am grateful to know you. I'm grateful to have you here chatting with us. And I hope that we know each other for a very, very, very long time because I want to see every single one <laughs> of your victories that you have um, until, until we're done. So um, thank you so much for your time here and thank you for being that beautiful brilliant beacon of light for so many people thank you that's that's so sweet <laughs> yeah i appreciate that like imagery of the shining light and i can only hope to be that and i'm so grateful to the both of you as well for providing this opportunity to like help educate and help like share stories of hope because again it's so easy to get lost in everything so i'm so very grateful that I can always come back down here and like on my soapbox and you know tell my story so um thank you to both of you for having me and so well nice. we hope to have you back as many times as you want to keep giving us updates on where you're at because there's a lot of people who are invested in seeing how, just how far you can really go on the other end of pans and pandas um Isabella one more time tell us the name of your podcast so that people can check it out because it's yeah. an important podcast um, so it's called Invisible Illness, Invisible Patients, Invisible Women. It's not out, but it will be out, I'm sure, by the time that this is posted. Um, you can find it on basically any streaming apps um, like Spotify, but you can also find it on um, the Cloudcast San Diego website. Um, so again, just Invisible Illness, Invisible Patient, um, Invisible 
women. So. so this video might go on YouTube before it's available and it will for sure go into our Facebook group before it's actually available. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a launch date yet or will you just let us know so we can let people know? Yeah, I mean, towards the end of this week, it's just a matter of like getting it uploaded. Okay, so, so it's like imminent. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic, great. Um, well, we'll make sure that we let people know as soon as it's uploaded, you could reach out to me and say, hey, ready to go. And I cannot wait to listen to it. Okay. Right. Oh, again, also, I'd like to mention that Dr. Barr is featured on this podcast, if it gives you any <laughs> extra incentive. Um, she is one of the great people that I interviewed, so just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you again for your time, Isabella. I appreciate you immensely. Thanks.